Okay, we have some cool problems coming up in this lesson. Um, we're working with integrals, and like primarily we're still thinking of integrals as the area underneath the graph, and notice like our first three questions deal with this particular graph here. But also we have some questions about integrals as kind of the opposite of derivatives. So a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, I'm going to go in order, as always, feel free to skip around. Um, not all these questions I don't think are super challenging, um, so feel free to watch only the ones you need. Okay, so we have this integral now, the integral from 0 to negative 2 of 2f of x dx. So hopefully at this point, these bounds should ring alarm bells for you. So we want the lesser bound to be on the bottom. So we're going to rewrite this one to start. And if I've swapped the bounds, I need to put a negative sign out front. And then this two I can also factor out. Okay, so our solution to this integral as given is going to be negative two times the integral from negative two to zero of f. So on my graph, I'm going to go from negative two to zero. And I gave you this hint that we're going to need to use the formula for the area of a trapezoid. That is one-half times the sum of the bases times the height. Okay, so what we have here is this base is two, this base is one, and then the height seems to be two. So when I plug those into the area formula, I'm going to bring down just this negative two, and I'm going to replace the integral, the whole thing, with what I have here. So one-half times two plus one times two. So I just use this area formula here, and notice my 2's cancel out, and I get negative 2 times 3 here, which gives me negative 6 as my solution. Okay. So testing two things here, do you know how to find the area under the curve, and recognizing that it's the area formula, and do you know how to deal with these bounds being reversed, and how to rewrite them correctly? And we'll move on in just a second, make sure, make sure you understand how I got this solution, because if you don't understand this one, you're going to struggle with some of the ones in the future. Okay, my next question is on the same graph, but we're given this function now. So g of x is 2x plus this integral from negative 2 to x. Sorry about the noise. Negative 2 to x of f. So what this means, g of negative 5 means I plug in negative 5 wherever I see an x, just like we've always done. So I want the integral from negative 2 to negative 5 of f of t dt. Okay? And this should be plus here. So notice again, I have my bounds reversed. So we're going to rewrite. So negative 5 to negative 2 is how I want to write my integral, and then my change by plus to a minus. And then this 2 times negative 5 becomes negative 10. So remember, this is called an accumulation function. The way I solve it is just by plugging in my x and evaluating the integral. So now I need to go back up to my graph and figure out what this piece is here. So the integral from negative 5 to negative 2 is what I want. Negative 5 to negative 2. So that's going to be this region, negative 5 to negative 2. Right? Oops. And what we should notice, right, is we have two different shapes, and they're going to have two different signs. So I'm going to shade in these shapes so we can see what we're doing. So the first shape is a triangle, and that's below the x-axis, so that part of the integral is going to be negative, and then the other shape is a triangle above the x-axis. So we are, of course, going to use one-half base height. And it looks like, so that height of the triangle is the y-coordinate, negative 4, and 2 are the heights of my triangle. And we're going to do 1 half times 2 times 4 is going to be just 4 for the area of that triangle. And it's going to be negative because the, the, this region is below the x-axis. Here we have a triangle with width 1, or base 1 rather, and height 2. So we're going to do 1 half times 2 times 1. We're going to get an area of 1. So this integral that we're trying to evaluate is going to be the sum of these, right? So negative 4 
plus 1 is negative 3. And that's the integral from negative 5 to 2. Negative 2. So I'm going to replace that. And careful with my signs, right? Because we have a negative here. And then our result was negative 3. Right? So negative minus a negative becomes a positive. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 is my solution there. So this one really tests that you know how to tackle this accumulation function and that you know some of our properties of integrals. Number three, the next one is where I push you a little bit. So this is, this is something where I'm asking you to kind of reason about the relationship between derivatives and integrals, but not something that we've explored too much in the lessons prior to this, but something that you're going to start to explore in the rest of this unit. So it says, what is g prime of x in terms of f of x? Okay, so I want to take the derivative of g of x. I'm just going to rewrite g of x here so we can see it. I'm just copying it from up here. So g of x is this, right? So there's a couple of different ways that we can think about this. The simplest way, which will always get you to the correct answer, but it's not the most rigorous way to think about it, is just to think of what I'm getting at in this hint here. Derivatives and integrals are inverse operations. So if I take this derivative, g prime of x is going to be, I'm going to write this operator. This operator just means take the derivative. It's going to be the derivative of 2x plus the derivative of this integral or this accumulation function. And here's where I'm asking you to guess how to tackle that. So the derivative of 2x is just 2 plus, we'll see if your guess was correct. It probably was. These just cancel out, okay, and the dt as well, because that's part of the integral operation. So just like plus and minus cancel out because they're inverse operations, derivatives and integrals cancel out. So what's left now? is f of x. Okay, so the only thing we've changed is we've taken that x and replaced it by t. And that's our derivative. I can, if you're interested, show you the kind of more rigorous way to get to this conclusion, but this is a fine and correct way of thinking about it. Um, the only thing is that is like not clear from this way is, is why you plug in x instead of t. Um, so if you're curious about that, let me know and I can make it a little more clear for you. We'll move on for now. And here we are testing whether you know about the additive properties of these. This one is pretty easy. We just have to make sure we get things in the right order. Okay, so we have from 4 to 10. 4 to negative 10 is our first integral. So notice that is the wrong way around from how we like to see it. We're going to rewrite that right away. So we want the integral from negative 10 to 4 of g of x dx would be equal to, if this is a negative 3, a positive 3. Okay. And then what else do we have? We have the integral from 4 to 6 is 5, and then we want the integral of the whole thing. Well, this integral from negative 10 to 6 is going to be equal to the integral from negative 10 to 4 of g plus the integral from 4 to 6 of g. Okay, so that would be just 3 plus 5 is 8. Easy enough. So the only thing that you could have missed is having to rewrite that one. Okay, last one is another area problem. And this one looks scarier than it is. So we're evaluating the integral, and the integral is going to be the area under the curve. And we can chop this one up in a number of different ways. Let's start by figuring out what our bounds are. So negative 4 to 7, that's negative 4 on the left, all the way to 7. So it's this whole curve. And we can chop it up in a number of different ways. Notice that I tell you, 
that these these semicircles are indeed semicircles. So area of a circle is pi r squared. A semicircle would be half of that. So one half pi r squared. So we'll use that formula. And then everything else seems to be a pretty simple shape. Um, there's a couple different ways I can cut this up. I'm going to show you what I think the easiest way to do it is. I'm going to start with this. That's just a big rectangle. And notice there is a little triangle here that I'm not counting. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1. So my rectangle, the area is 6 times 1, which is 6. Then we have this little triangle. Make that triangle a different color. The little triangle is going to be 1 half times 1 times 1, because the base and the height are both 1, right? So that's going to be 1 half. And then we have this triangle over here. So that triangle is going to be, has a base of 2 and a height of 1, right? So um, 1 half times 2 times 1. It's just one, but it's below the x-axis, notice, so we're going to make it negative for the area. Okay, and then we have to deal with our two semicircles. So my first semicircle is this area here, and that has a radius of two, right? So I'm going to do one-half times pi times two squared. 2 squared is 4, over 2 is 2, so the result here is 2 pi for the area of that semicircle. And then we just have that last region there, purple, and that has a radius of 1. So almost out of space, 1 half times pi times 1 squared. So that really is just 1 half pi, and that's going to be negative because our, this region is below the x-axis. So make sure you caught that. And then we're just going to add everything together. So notice our solution is in terms of pi. So there's a term with pi and a term without. We'll start with that pi term. So I'm doing 2 pi minus 1 half pi, which will give us 3 halves pi. So I can strike C and D. And then what else do I have? I have 6 plus 1 half minus 1. So 6 minus 1 is 5 plus 1 half is 5 and 1 half, which is the same as 11 over 2. So B is my solution there.